Well, I'm delighted to share with you an update from the TiVo3 study. Uh, this is data that we presented at the ASCO 2020 meeting. Um, and essentially this represents the final overall survival analysis for the study. Before we get into the meat and potatoes of the trial, I just wanted to really paint a picture for the landscape of renal cell carcinoma therapy for you. Uh, the treatment paradigm has really evolved for this disease. If we think about the years 2005 and onwards, we had first had the evolution of targeted therapies with agents like sunitinib and ultimately pizopinib introduced in the frontline setting. Of course, we've had a slew of clinical trials just reported over the past three years that have really pushed up either pure immunotherapy regimens like nivolumab and ipilimumab or combinations of VEGF TKIs with immunotherapy, like either axitinib with avelumab or axitinib with pembrolizumab. And I think that everybody would concede that some combination therapy is probably gonna represent the ideal frontline treatment, at least for intermediate and poor risk disease. Now that really leaves folks with a dilemma because we really don't have second line therapy established. If we're using a regimen like nivolumab and ipilimumab up front, or axitinib and pembrolizumab up front, second line therapy really becomes a bit of a gap. Um, and with that in mind, we really have started to shift gears and focus on second line treatment. So there's a whole slew of studies that are evolving now to address second line therapy. Uh, we're running a trial called CONTACT3, which looks at cabozantinib plus or minus atezolizumab. Um, we have other retrospective series that suggest a role for agents like CABO or axitinib as second line therapy if they haven't been rendered in the frontline setting. I think a lot of people now are familiar with some compelling data for lenvatinib with pembrolizumab in second line. Uh, and I'm going on and on about second line therapy, but truthfully, there's been very little done to address what we would do for patients beyond that. Um, I have a practice that's almost wall-to-wall -wall kidney cancer, uh, and I think that one area of unmet need is third and fourth line therapy for patients with advanced renal cell carcinoma. So that's really where the TiVo3 trial comes in. Uh, TiVo3 is a randomized phase three clinical trial that really addresses patients who have been exposed to multiple prior therapies. Um, these patients do exist in our clinical practices. While there is certainly some attrition as you go from first line to second line and so on, uh, I would say that the vast majority of patients in my practice nowadays are actually gonna require some form of third life therapy. The TiVo3 clinical trial took patients that had been exposed to either a VEGF inhibitor and an IO-based therapy, a VEGF inhibitor and another VEGF inhibitor, or, or potentially a VEGF inhibitor and another therapy, really patients that had at least been exposed to one VEGF inhibitor, and randomized them to either tavazinib or serafinib. If you're not familiar with tavazinib, uh, tavazinib is an agent that really serves as a very potent and specific inhibitor of the VEGF receptor. It has very limited off-target toxicities. Um, you don't see it to any sort of significant extent blocking uh, receptors outside of the VEGF family. And we think that this really limits its extent of toxicity and perhaps actually might increase its efficacy relative to other therapies. So that was the a priori hypothesis going into TiVo3. Uh, this trial randomized again to serafinib, which is antiquated, but I think a very reasonable standard in the third line therapy. There have been attempts to demonstrate superiority to serafinib, but it hasn't been done at this point. Uh, for instance, in the context of the phase three trial of dovitinib, an FGFR3 inhibitor. Um, so in TiVo3, patients received either oral agent in a one-to-one -one fashion. Patients were treated until the time of progression or unacceptable toxicity. And it's important to keep in mind, and I'll harp on in this a little bit later, that the primary endpoint of the study was progression-free survival. In the third and fourth line setting, we are not anticipating a significant benefit in overall survival. First and foremost, treatments remain very heterogeneous after third and fourth line therapy. That can certainly play into things. Uh, and fundamentally, no study comparing one VEGF inhibitor to another has really demonstrated an overall survival to date. I could go on and on with these comparisons, but you know, some relevant ones include Compars, which looked at sedentinib versus Pazopinib. We'll get back to that a little bit later. Um, in this trial, patients had 
characteristics that were quite representative of a population of patients with advanced renal cell carcinoma. Median age in this study was 63. Uh, we had a really in, uh, well distributed population of patients on the basis of IMDC risk category. 20% of patients, which is a very typical distribution, were good risk. 60% of patients were intermediate risk. Another 20% were poor risk. And in terms of the breakdown of prior therapies, about 25% of patients or a quarter of patients in the study had gotten prior checkpoint inhibitors. That, that's a particularly important subset, and I definitely think it's something worth looking at. Um, and we had about half of patients, 45% to be more precise, that had gotten two VEGF inhibitors. Now, when you look at progression-free survival, this data is not significantly changed from what me and Brian Reaney reported in Lancet Oncology a couple of months ago. We had a paper there suggesting that tavazinib really re uh, reduced the risk of progression relative to serafinib with a hazard ratio of 0 0.73. Uh, the median progression-free survival was 5.6 months with tavazinib. Uh, versus just 3.9 months with serafinib. And what's interesting to me, and as you look at this poster, you can really see a clear separation in these curves. Uh, I might even argue that there's a tail on the curve for patients receiving tavazinib therapy. Many have asked, well, what about the population of patients that have gotten a prior VEGF receptor TKI? It's important to note that when you look at those patients, patients that have gotten prior uh, VEGF TKI plus VEGF TKI, those are individuals who actually seem to benefit a little bit more. If you look at the progression for a survival hazard ratio, recall that it was 0.73 in the overall population, it actually drops down to 0.55 if you've gotten a prior VEGF inhibitor and a TKI. Uh, and that really lends itself to where I might ultimately position to Vosinib in terms of sequencing. Now, uh, the crux of this poster was really the overall survival analysis. Um, we can go into the history of tavazinib here for just a moment, but if you recall, the TiVo-1 clinical trial was a trial designed very similarly to TiVo-3. It randomized patients to either tavazinib or serafinib in the frontline setting, and that study actually showed a slightly inferior survival with tavazinib relative to serafinib. Now, my opinion, and I think the opinion of most investigators, is that that was really secondary to the fact that crossover was allowed in the study. The study was done in lots of populations that wouldn't have had access to second and third line therapy otherwise. So for those populations of patients, it's, it's clear that if you receive seraf and have then got tavazin into the second line therapy, the sequence of agents you were exposed to would be superior. With that in mind, there was really a laser focus on overall survival of this study. And what we saw here was really no significant difference. Uh, you see a hazard ratio ultimately, and we reported this out um, at the time of the meeting, of 0.97. So that hazard ratio of 0.97 is very, very important. Um, and I think that it suggests that there does not seem to be any impediment in survival, and in fact, balanced survival with tavazinib relative to serafinib very different from what was observed in that first study. And again, that first study of TiVo-1 could be easily, I think, explained by the crossover effect. Now, moving on to the um, survival in separate cohorts, I will point out that there seemed to be a modest trend. I'm not going to make too much out of this, but a modest trend towards improved survival in a cohort of patients receiving checkpoint inhibitor and VEGF-TKI as our prior therapy. That was 91 patients, and you can see in that particular cohort the overall survival hazard ratio is 0.84. So moving on to response to therapy, no CRs in this trial, uh, but when it comes to uh, response rate, 18% with tavazinib versus just 8% with serafinib. A more than doubling of response rate with tavazinib relative to serafinib. And again, I think this is the probably first time that we've seen this in the context of a TKI versus TKI clinical trial. So very important to bear that in mind. Stable disease rates balanced between the populations and primary progressive disease very similar between the two populations as well. When it comes to adverse event profile in the context of this study, 84% of patients receiving tavazinib had adverse events versus 94% getting serafinib. Uh, the most common treatment-related adverse events with tavazinib in this case were hypertension, uh, which was in about 20% of patients. 
Um, I will say that serious treatment-related adverse events were similar with both Devozinib and Serafinib, but there are fewer dose interruptions, and this is really true to my clinical practice, fewer dose interruptions with Devozinib as compared to Serafinib on account of adverse events. Uh, there were also significantly fewer reductions in dose due to adverse events with Tavazinib. Um, so I do think that for the clinicians who with a busy practice, uh, Tavazinib is an easier drug to handle. And as you look across the toxicity table, and I think this really sort of speaks to the toxicity profile of the agent, you're seeing a bit less in the way of hand-foot syndrome, which is a very bothersome toxicity associated with serafinib. You're seeing a little bit less in the way, for instance, of um, of rash, which was an issue with serafinib on this particular study. Uh, so some real merits to using tavazinib. And with tavazinib, you see sort of the classic spectrum of on-target toxicity, such as hypertension and fatigue. So in summary, the data really points towards a significant advantage with tavazinib over serafinib as third or fourth line therapy. We see no significant difference in overall survival, no concerning signal as was seen in the TiVo-1 clinical trial. So I think that this study really serves as proof of concept that tavazinib uh, can represent an important choice for patients in the third and fourth line setting with advanced renal cell carcinoma. I'm really keeping my fingers crossed, and this is me editorializing now a little bit, that we get FDA approval for this agent. I think that it represents a very safe and tolerable therapy. I have always been of the mindset that more treatment options are better for patients. I'll also propose that by the time we get to third and fourth line therapy, performance status becomes an issue amongst patients and patients really need and deserve a break. Um, and this toxicity profile that I've seen with Tavazinib uh, with hands on the agent and experience in the clinics is that it seems to be better tolerated than the other VEGF TKIs that I've used in my clinical practice. There's also practical issues to consider too. You know, by the time you go past regimens like Nevo Ipi, Cabo, or Axi Pembro, you know, you really have a limited armamentarium of options. Regimens like Lymvatinib and Everolimus may actually be moved out of the picture because of frontline data for Lymvatinib and Pembrolizumab. Um, so with that in mind, you really do have limited options for third and fourth line therapy. The choice comes to agents like Tavazinib versus perhaps agents like Sinitinib and Pizopinib. I'll, I'll have you bear in mind though, that if you have a patient that's progressed on immunotherapy, it's quite dangerous on my mind to consider Sinitinib and Pizopinib. You usually have a lingering immune-based effect and that can complement potential hepatotoxicity associated with those agents. We did phase one studies of sinitinib with nivolumab and pizopinib with nivolumab that showed really prohibitive rates of hepatotox. Um, so I would propose that moving forward, tavazinib really represents a safe and efficacious and really preferable choice for third and fourth line therapy for our patients with advanced renal cell carcinoma. Thank you for your attention.